Bunny. Yes. You live under a rock. I do. Let me now let me be clear. You live under a rock, not under the rock. rock. Yes. The only person who lives under the only person who lives under Barack is Michelle, if you know what I mean. Huh? 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 <laughs> Wink, nudge, nudge. Huh? Huh? Uh-huh. Fuck. Uh-huh. I mean, fuck. That's what I meant. I meant fuck. <laughs> Anywho, due to your rockness, I sometimes worry that although you no doubt hear the big news, that the smaller news might slip through your fingers slip through your dainty fingers, which is why I occasionally spank your ass with facts in yet another <laughs> installment of the Pope on Film News Smatterings. News Smatterings. And what has smattered in the news? Yeah. Lately? Let me... First off, there's the big news yeah. that everybody's talking about. Uh, I worked out right before the podcast. Oh, yeah. I'm actually glad that Skype took a long time to load for you because I needed to actually uh, breathe. Yeah. So that was good. That was good. What caused you to work out? Well, I lost 10 pounds recently um, in the Tao of Steve diet. Okay. Meaning I've been really worried about my weight it, it, and, and like, like I would go to my wife and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm 169 pounds. And she would say, that's not fat. You're not fat. And, not, and then I would counter with yes, but this is the fattest I've ever been. I've never been this heavy before. So to me, this is fat. I know it, it's not fat to you, but it is to me. So, so after like months and months of me trying to, to, to lose weight finally i just said you know what i'm gonna do this is what i'm gonna do not weigh myself that is that is the the most sensical approach to yeah take. well it it works until your pants don't fit yeah so i noticed that my pants weren't weren't fitting as as great as they used to so i weigh i didn't weigh myself throughout november and december and january and so i weighed myself now and Apparently, I had lost 10 pounds, but I just keep looking down, and I'm like, I don't know where I lost these 10 pounds. Maybe in my butt and back. Yeah. How the frick do you lose weight during Thanksgiving and Christmas? Uh, how? So, like, um, I can't if I that. am going... How did I lose weight how? during Thanksgiving? Yeah. Um, Nobody does that. <laughs> I think your evil twin stole it. That's Maybe. bad thing. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe it's because the person who used to make Thanksgiving passed on. Oh, okay. I was waiting for Tasha to leave the room before I said that. Yeah. But, yeah, that might be a reason why, too. The food wasn't the same. The dinner wasn't the same. It just wasn't the same. Thanksgiving and Christmas. So I would the the main thing I would eat is this family recipe called granny potatoes, and they didn't make them uh, during the big Christmas dinner, and they hardly made any during Thanksgiving dinner, and they weren't the same. So I was like, you know what, I'm I'm good. I don't need anything. Yeah, a few bits of turkey, but that's it. So anyway, I lost the, I lost ten pounds, but I keep looking down at my stomach, and I'm like, it doesn't look like I lost ten pounds. I I look the same, if not worse. I still have this bit of a gut. So finally, I just said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to I'm going to start working out a little bit at home. So I did as many push ups as I could and sit ups as I could. And then I'm like, oh, crap. I didn't realize the time I have to do the podcast like now. So I'm sitting here waiting for you to for to pop up on Skype while also going. <gasps> so thankfully, it took a while. I was very excited about that because now I can breathe. Skype still says we're not connected. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. <laughs> but Skype can't lie to us because we know that there's a connection. Yeah. So in other news, in other not as important news, the Super Bowl. I, 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 I heard that if you don't clap for the president, it's treason. Yes, that's true. That's true. It's treason. Because uh, because Donald Trump thinks he's America now. Yes. So if people hate him, 
then those people must hate America because I'm the president of America. Like, he automatically thinks that because he's the president, he is now a flag. <laughs> it's like, oh, I hate Donald Trump. So you hate the flag? <laughs> no, I just hate you. Well, I don't know why you hate America like that. I don't hate America. I just hate you in America. <laughs> Confused. I'm America. No, you're not. You son of a bitch. I have a longer work day, day than you, so sit your ass down. Yeah. So in less important news, the Super Bowl happened. And for those of you who don't know fake sports like the NFL, the Super Bowl is sort of like the WrestleMania or the Ultima Lucha of football. Yes. And every year it's always fun for me to see a team win and then see a city of white people riot, and then see the news struggle to white-splain it. <laughs> yes. Passionate fans in the streets of Philadelphia celebrating with overturned cars on fire. <laughs> celebrating. Yes. Celebrating, Super Bowl, as you do. Yeah. yeah. The Super Bowl is really big for me, though, only because movie trailers drop. Yeah. So there's Solo, the prequel film about Red Solo cops featuring Donald Glover as Tupperware, uh -huh. which I'm very excited about. Then there's Tom Cruise's film, Mission Impossible, number does it even matter anymore? Not at all. But the big news was the secret third Cloverfield movie. Yes, I, I, I saw that drop on Netflix. Yeah, and so was a bit, really? Yeah, so Paramount was making a movie called The God Particle, and they were hiding from people the fact that it was actually a Cloverfield film. And it's about uh, uh like a about like a like a them trying to find the God Particle and them turning on this machine, but it it also has to do with alternate universes and yada yada yada. And it was secretly a Cloverfield film, and uh, real weird cast like uh. Uh, Chris O'Dowd is in it. Yeah, for, I guess because every crew stranded in space needs one funny guy. Yes. <laughs> and then, uh, what's his name? Uh, the German sniper from Inglorious Bastards is in it. The bad guy from Civil War is in it. Oh, okay. so from Captain America: Civil War, the one guy who lost everyone in Sokovia and yeah. got. Iron Man to almost kill Captain America. So anyway, uh, so they made this movie, but apparently Paramount is having severe financial fucking problems. So what happened was uh, the the old executives and CEOs left Paramount and the new executives and CEOs said, OK, we are kind of hurting right now. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're not releasing anything. If there's anything that's going to be coming out, just push it back, push it back, keep pushing it back. Now, let's gather all of the films that have been released. We're going to line them up, and we're only going to release them if they're going to be a hit. So they had all these movies, and they're like, okay, this film might be a hit. We can release that. This film's not going to be a hit, be a hit. This film, I don't know, it might be a good art house film, but this film isn't going to be a hit. So, so Paramount had all like a handful of films, maybe like two handfuls of films, a bowls, a bowl of films. Yeah. That they didn't think would be a success at the box office. And they're like, what the hell do we do with this? Meanwhile, Netflix is just desperate for any new shit. Yeah. So Netflix said, you know what? We'll buy that uh, third Cloverfield film off of you. So they bought it and then they, they released the trailer during the Super Bowl with the announce with the announcement that it will be released immediately after the Super Bowl. And so, of course, once I saw that, I went on Netflix and it said uh, the Cloverfield Paradox. Yeah. Uh, this film will be available after the game. Okay. Really weird. So now people are watching the Cloverfield film and now they're like, oh, OK, so this is the third one. I mean, if a like some people like it, some people are like, eh. If if anything, it has a really exciting uh, release. 
which I've never seen before. And number two, I imagine that a billion trillion people saw it after the Super Bowl. Like that's really good advertising. Yes. Yes. But, I, they probably would have suckered me in with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I could definitely see that happening, but yeah, I was kind of surprised. I was like, yes, Cloverfield has a following. I don't think Cloverfield has this kind of following. If anything, if anything, because a lot of people are shitting on this new Cloverfield film right now. The one thing that it has going for it is that when it was thought up and when it was created and when it was filmed, it was a Cloverfield movie, as opposed to J.J. Abrams seeing this film with uh, that they're about to film with John Goodman and Ramona Flowers. Yeah being trapped in a basement and saying, Hey, I could turn this film into a Cloverfield film. Yeah. Cause that was 10 Cloverfield lane. Yes. At least this one is like from the beginning to the end, this is going to be a Cloverfield film. And it does explain maybe one or two things from the Cloverfield universe. Yeah. If anything, it's kind of a prequel. Like who Superman to- is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, so so the shakeup at Paramount, there's a number of casualties to the whole uh, Paramount restructuring. One major one being that they were in pre-production on a big budget Friday the 13th reboot. But now not only is the reboot dead, but it looks like Paramount is done with the Friday the 13th franchise. Really? Yeah. Friday yeah. the third, yeah, yeah. Paramount's just like, oh no, we're done with Friday the Thirteenth movies. I imagine that if you really look at the numbers, when was the last time that the studio made money on a Friday the Thirteenth movie? Yeah, you know, yeah, that's that just a long time ago. That just reminds me. I, I was looking through some tutorials last night. I forget for what exactly, and there was this one that said, "Make Freddy's mask," and I was like the fuck jason had a mask michael had a mask that was just freddy's face man yeah you know that was not a mask yeah so until i found out it was five nights at freddy's ah gotcha gotcha bella would have gotten that one so what is the future of jason i think it's obvious disney Disney. Jason teams up with Magneto to take on the Fantastic Four and the Avengers. It might sound stupid, but excuse me, Jason X? (laughs) Jason takes Manhattan? You know who also took Manhattan? The Muppets! The Muppets, yes. And they took it first. Took Manhattan. So in other news, um... In sports news, some important sports news, in some earth-shattering sports news. Yes. I am officially watching the WWE again. Really? Okay, what happened? Uh, Specifically, I am watching, or at least trying to watch, NXT, their low-rent rookie division in training ground. NXT, oh my god, some real cheap-ass quality. Oh my god. Yeah. This is a real cheap show. The quality is about the same as watching Ring of Honor on Channel 64 on UHF, like <laughs> early ECW. I thought it would be, I thought there it, it would have more quality because it's the WWE, but whatever. So the reason why I'm watching NXT is because NXT tapes in advance. They tape three or four weeks in advance and literally about, Five days ago, a guy at an NXT taping filmed about 30 seconds of an NXT show Uh that featured Ricochet's in-ring debut. Okay. Ricochet, as in Prince Puma, as in the champion of Lucha Underground. And he's like, hey... Uh, here's footage of Ricochet making his in-ring debut. His finisher is sick. And I'm like, yeah, he's been doing that on the L. Ray network since like 2015, you sons of bitches. 
<laughs> so now I'm so now I'm watching NXT, trying to get into it, so I can at least know who these people are when Ricochet comes. I yeah. got to start watching this shit, so I'm watching it. I'm watching <laughs> it. Um. So here's some more news, and this is really odd. So DC Comics has for a while now been giving gritty reboots to Hanna Barbera characters. Really? Yeah, there's a comic book called Scooby Apocalypse. Okay. And and and, and I'm I'm being 100% serious here. It's a gritty Scooby Doo reboot. It's set in the future and they're trying to survive like the zombie apocalypse. Huh. It looks all it looks all futuristic and badass and and yeah, real weird. And so so that's the Scooby Doo one. The Flintstones cart the Flintstones comic book um is trying to redo what the Flintstones originally did, which was here's a cartoon and it deals with 1960s ideals and stuff, except it's just it's on prime time for adults. And so now the Flintstones is trying to be, it looks realistic. So it's a realistic looking Fred Flintstone and Wilma and all that. And they are in the stone age, but they're dealing with current issues. Yeah. So much so that, that some magazine gave uh, the Flintstones, the, the designation of, 2017's most woke comic book. <laughs> like in the okay. recent issue, in the recent issue, uh, the 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 women leave on a vacation, and so Fred and and Barney are hanging out together, and they realize, um, uh, uh, they come to realize gender inequality. Uh huh. So it's a, yeah, it's a real, it, it's a, it takes a, a, a real hard look at current issues. Then there's like the team up one and it, it's, it's this team up one that it, it's like a super group with space ghost, the blue Falcon and Johnny quest. All right. And they're together in a team fighting bad guys. It's really weird. Well now, and I'm not lying here. There's a new comic book that DC comics is coming out. So I and again, this is all Googleable. You can Google all of this now in the comic books. Snagglepuss <laughs> okay. is a gay playwright in the 1950s. I can see that. Yeah, I yeah, can see that. Yeah. yeah. So that's the comic book right now, and he's rubbing elbows with like famous people and like I don't know Hemingway and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and they all really respect weird. the snag. Yeah, yeah, really weird. President Trump is uh, busy rounding up all of the illegal immigrants. Man, it's about time a president had the guts to round up all of these uh, illegals that are causing crime and uh, doing damage to America, stealing all of our jobs. Of course, I'm talking about all of these damn Irish people. Yes. And I'm serious. Trump is rounding up Irish people. Like, literally, Trump just went to ICE, yeah. the Immigration Customs Enforcement, and said, hey, do whatever the fuck you want. And then ICE is like, really? Cool. We're going to just start rounding up everyone. So it's not just that they're rounding up all of these, like, Somali refugees and all of these uh, Mexican immigrants, but literally, like, oh, Hey, uh, John O'Shaughnessy, <laughs> mm -hmm. you've been here for 32 years. Sorry, back to Ireland with you. I, I, I heard some article on NPR, and it's so weird to hear this, like, a, for all accounts, American guy. Yeah. And he gets sent to, like, this immigration detention center. And there's, like, a, a, a 12 Mexicans over there and there's two Somalis and there's a uh, one Ethiopian and then there's four Iranians and there's two Indian guys. And then it, right in the middle is one redheaded guy, <laughs> one redheaded white guy. <laughs> and, and it's really sad how we're rounding up just all of these illegal immigrants. And it doesn't matter if they 
are criminals or not. They're, you're illegal and that's a crime enough and you're going back to your own country. But it's like you've been living here in America for so long. Mm -hmm. It's like if I was sent well, to Mexico. Well, for me, first off, they're, they're, they're not deporting a hell of a lot of people. Okay? Yeah. And the ones that are getting deported, they make the news. Okay? All the rest of them are sitting in a pay a pay for prison, yeah, as slave labor, on yeah. our dime. So you take a taxpayer, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. And, and then make that taxpayer cost us money somehow. Yeah, it's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. How odd too that it, that. Oh, you're also rounding up the white illegals. I didn't know you were doing that. <laughs> oh, all right then. Finally, in response to both the GOP and the Democrats, just to let all of our listeners know, Bunny and I will soon be releasing our own memo. Yes. Which will detail how the, uh, the it, it will go into detail about the deep state conspiracy that exists between Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump, George Soros, Paul Giamatti, and the evil Davos globalist Baskin Robbins, Illuminati, Circuit City, Obama lizard people. Finally, the truth will come out. Yes. And about fucking time. Interesting fact every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings, but inversely, every time. Uh, a minority says a uh, deep state conspiracy and Alex Jones gets erect. <laughs> Not only every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Also, every time a bell rings, a Kurt Angle gets his neck broken. Did he get his neck broken again? No, no. But he was one of those dudes that you could just drop directly on his head and his neck could break and then he'd keep wrestling. Yeah. What's wrong with Eleanor? I don't fucking know. She's tired. She kept poking at me. Didn't yep. ask. I know what she wants. But she won't ask for it, so she's going to get fucked. She's not going to. Well, oh, she's going to Amber now, her other mom. <laughs> Eleanor loves freaking Amber. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 